वेलकम एवरी वन इन दिस सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ पार्टिकल फिजिक्स वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एनर्जी एंड चार्ज कंजर्वेशन लॉज इन द नेचर सम सबेटोमिक पार्टिकल्स आर स्टेबल वाइल सम आर वेरी अनस्टेबल दीज पार्टिकल्स इधर डीके बाई देम सेल्फ्स और इंट्रैक्ट विथ अनदर पार्टिकल एंड डीके इन टू अदर पार्टिकल्स बट पार्टिकल्स टू डीके इन दिस वे और इंट्रैक्ट विथ अनदर पार्टिकल्स इज नॉट अ रैंडम प्रोसेस रादर एवरी डीके रिएक्शन प्रोसीड्स अकॉर्डिंग टू सम कंजर्वेशन लॉज These conservation laws decides whether the reaction will be allowed or not. All the conservation laws are divided into two parts. Universal or exact conservation laws are such conservation laws that are necessary for any reaction to be allowed. These laws are energy conservation, charge conservation, momentum conservation, lepton number conservation and baryon number conservation. These all are universal conservation laws that reaction cannot be allowed. if any one of them is violated while there are some other conservation laws some of them may conserve in a reaction but some may not but still the reaction will be allowed these are called approximate conservation laws these are isospin conservation strangeness conservation parity conservation charge conjugate and time reversal conservation in this lecture of conservation laws we will talk about two universal conservation laws एनर्जी एंड चार्ज कॉन्जर्वेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट एनर्जी कॉन्जर्वेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू एनर्जी कॉन्जर्वेशन द टोटल एनर्जी ऑफ द सिस्टम शुड बी कंजर्व इन एनी न्यूक्लियर रिएक्शन सिंस द वेलासिटी ऑफ सब एटोमिक पार्टिकल्स आर एक्सट्रीमली हाई देयर फॉर मास एंड एनर्जी आर कंसिडर्ड इक्यूबेलेंट टू ईच अदर लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड दिस विद एन एग्जाम्पल इफ टू पेरेंट पार्टिकल्स ए एंड बी इंट्रैक्ट एंड डी के इन टू टू डॉटर पार्टिकल्स then in this reaction the total energy of the parent particles should be equal to the total energy of the daughter particles here total energy means rest mass energy and kinetic energy of the particle rest mass energy is why because particles move with the relativistic velocity so if the initial total energy in this reaction is equal to the final total energy then this reaction will be called allowed but there is a problem that to verify the energy conservation in a reaction you must know the mass of all particles and their kinetic energy but this information is not given in the question most of the time then how will we verify energy conservation well whenever the energy conservation for a reaction is verified in an exam the parent particles are given only one rather than two that means energy conservation always get verify for a decay reaction in a decay reaction a parent particle decay into two daughter particles like the parent particle a decaying in daughter particle b and c another important thing to be consider is that in such a decay reaction assuming the particle a is decaying in rest position so the kinetic energy of the parent particle a will be zero if we verify the energy conservation for this decay reaction then the total energy of the parent particle will be ma c square because the kinetic energy is zero and the energy of daughter particles will be mb c square plus kb and mc c square plus kc by rearranging this relation the rest mass energy of the parent particle is equal to the sum of the total rest mass energy and total kinetic energy of the daughter particles this means the rest mass energy of the parent particle is more than the total rest mass energy of the daughter particles that means the mass of the parent particle will be more than the total mass of the daughter particles this is the condition to proceed on decay reaction any decay reaction can be possible only when the mass of the parent particle is more than the total mass of the daughter particles it also another means that in any decay reaction a heavy particle can be decay in light mass particles but a light mass particle cannot be decay in heavy particles If after the decay daughter particles come in rest then their kinetic energy will be zero in this condition according to energy conservation mass of parent particle will exactly equal to the total mass of the daughter particles in short we can say that in any nuclear decay reaction energy can be conserved only when mass of parent particle is equal or more than the total mass of the daughter particles in this way the energy conservation for a decay reaction can be verified such as decay of neutron in proton and electron we want to verify the energy conservation for this reaction 
the mass of neutron is 940 mega electron volt while the mass of proton and electron are 938 and 0.511 mega electron volt since the mass of the parent neutron is more than the total mass of both daughter particles energy is conserved in this reaction even if the other conservation laws are not conserved in this reaction but this decay is allowed according to energy conservation if the proton is decayed into the neutron and electron then in this reaction the mass of the parent proton is less than the total mass of both daughter particles which is a violation of energy conservation therefore this decay reaction would be forbidden according to energy conservation law in december 2019 csir net exam it was asked which of these reactions is allowed in this question the first reaction is allowed while the rest of the three reactions are forbidden due to different reasons talk about the third reaction this is a violation of energy conservation law in this reaction the mass of parent particle is 940 and the mass of daughter particles are 938 and 140 mega electron volt respectively which means that the mass of the parent particle is less than the total mass of the daughter particles which is a violation of energy conservation therefore this reaction does not conserve Let's solve another example. Having 4.5 giga electron volt free energy, what is the most massive isotope one could theoretically produce from nothing? According to the question, we want to know which of the three made the most massive isotope produced from 4.5 giga electron volt free energy. These three isotopes are deuteron, helium-3, and triton. In this way, the production of a particle from free energy is called pair production. in which free energy produces a particle and an anti particle that means pair production will produce at least two particles which will be particle and anti particle of each other from energy conservation we know that the mass of the parent particle should be equal or more than the mass of the daughter particle which means that two daughter particles will be produced from 4.5 giga electron volt energy their individual mass can not be more than 2.25 giga electron volt otherwise they will violate energy conservation talk about the first option deuteron then the nucleus consisting of a proton and a neutron is called deuteron the mass of a proton is 938 mega electron volt while the mass of neutron is 940 mega electron volt that means mass of a deuteron is approx 1878 mega electron volt or 1.878 giga electron volt so the mass of its anti particle will also be 1.878 giga electron volt which is less than 2.25 giga electron volt therefore according to energy conservation deuteron can be produced from 4.5 giga electron volt energy but whether helium 3 and triton can also be produced a helium 3 nucleus consists of two protons and one neutron with a total mass of approx 2816 mega electron volt or 2.816 giga electron volt but we have already known that the maximum energy of a particle produced from 4.5 giga electron volt energy can only be 2.25 giga electron volt so helium 3 cannot be produced talk about triton this nucleus consists of one proton and two neutrons whose total mass will be 2818 mega electron volt or 2.818 giga electron volt again this also cannot produce from 4.5 giga electron volt free energy there are some particles which mass is given in mega electron volt the mass of neutrino is the lowest of all mass particles but the exact value of its mass is debatable therefore for the moment the mass of neutrino can be assumed to be almost zero again it can be difficult to remember them therefore if we look at the masses of all these particles related to the mass of an electron the muon is 208 times massive than the electron while the pion is 280 times the proton is 1836 times then the neutron is 1840 times massive while tau is 3477 times more massive particle than electron apart from this the masses of all other particles are mentioned in this table in mega electron volt which you can note
Second conservation law is charge conservation. According to this law, total charge should be conserved in any nuclear reaction. Any particle will be either positively or negatively charged or be neutral. So the total charge of the parent particles before the reaction should be equal to the total charge of the daughter particles after the reaction. Such as the decay of neutron into proton and pion. Neutron is a neutral particle while proton has a charge of plus 1 and pion has a charge of minus 1. The total charge of the parent particle in this reaction is equal to the total charge of the daughter particles. That means this reaction is allowed according to charge conservation law. In December 2014 CSIR net exam, a question was asked, consider these four processes which of the above are forbidden for free particle. In this, the first and second reactions are forbidden for a free particle. Talk about the first reaction, a proton is being decayed into neutron, positron and neutrino. This is a violation of energy conservation. By energy conservation, we know that in a decay reaction, the mass of the parent particle should be more than the total mass of the daughter particles. The mass of proton is 938 mega electron volt, while the mass of neutron is 940 mega electron volt and the mass of positron is 0.511 mega electron volt, while the mass of neutrino is almost zero. Since the mass of the parent proton is less than the total mass of the daughter particles, this reaction is a violation of energy conservation. But wait a minute, the decay of proton into neutron, positron and neutrino is called beta decay. If the proton emits positron by decay in neutron, then it is called beta plus decay. But if electron is emitted by decay of neutron in proton, then it is called beta minus decay. And both the beta decay exist in nature. Then why this reaction is forbidden? This is because it is mentioned in the question that proton is a free particle, which decaying in neutron, positron and neutrino, while beta decay does not happen with free proton. Rather, the beta decay process occurs inside the nucleus only. Outside the nucleus, a free proton cannot decay in neutron because the mass of the proton is less than the mass of neutron. But inside the nucleus, proton is not the only particle. Rather, there are other protons and neutrons which together provide binding energy to the nucleus. Due to this binding energy, light mass proton decay into heavy mass neutron because binding energy compensates this difference in the mass of proton and neutron. But according to the question, reaction is not happening inside the nucleus. That is why the first reaction in this question is not allowed according to energy conservation. Talk about the second reaction, the parent particle lambda is decaying in proton, positron and neutrino. Lambda is a neutral particle, while proton and positron have positive electric charge. The neutrino is also a neutral particle. Since the electric charge is not conserved in this reaction, this reaction is forbidden according to charge conservation. After studying these two conservation laws, we can understand why electron is a stable particle. By energy conservation, we know that if the electron will be decay, then it can be decay in a lighter mass particle than itself. Because if the electron will decay in heavy mass particles, then there will be a violation of energy conservation. Particles with less mass than electron are neutrino and photon. Neutrino is a neutral particle of a very tiny mass, almost zero mass, and the photon is also a massless neutral particle. If we decay electron in neutrino and photon, even if the energy will be conserved, but because of negatively charged electron, the charge conservation rule will be violated. Therefore, electron is a stable particle. Because energy and charge conservation rules never allow it to decay in any other particle. Now it's time for short notes. In any decay reaction for energy conservation, mass of parent particle should be greater than the total mass of daughter particles. If after decay daughter particles comes in rest, then in this condition mass of parent particle will be equal to the total mass of the daughter particles. Beta decay of proton in neutron can only be possible inside a nucleus. Outside the nucleus, this reaction violates energy conservation law. 
for charge conservation total charge should be remain conserved these are some nuclear reactions for your practice some of these are violated by energy conservation and some of them are violated by charge conservation if you wish you can download detailed pdf notes of this lecture to download notes you can either get membership of our patreon page or you can also download notes via link given in the description below